Hey horse friends, I'm Becca Salamon and this is Southern Horse Talk and I'm on location in Gadsden, Alabama at the River Country Campground and I'm standing here with Dick Pritchett. He was on my radio show not too long ago and we came out to see what it's all about to do Dutch oven cooking. How are you doing today, Dick? Hey, great. It's, it's great to have you here and uh, we've got uh, 35 or 40 people here that's cooking today. We'll probably have 65 to 70 pots on the table at 3 o'clock. It's a beautiful day, sunshiny, and it's the kind of day that uh, we'd love to have people come out. And today, I, let me tell you just a little bit about my what I'm doing. This is a 12-inch uh, lodge Dutch oven. I cooked, uh, this is a combination of uh, turnips, turnip greens, and mustard in this pot. You're making this, me hungry. <laughs> this is going to be rice which will be the base for this dish, which is cowboy stew, pinto beans, and uh, beef <laughs> on top. That's black-eyed peas, so uh, we got a little uh, little veggies coming our way today. Yeah, you got, it looks like you got the whole thing going here. Yeah. So what is the process to uh, cook this, and how long does it take to cook? Well, it takes about uh, three or four hours to, to cook it the way that grandmother used to cook it in the Dutch oven. We do use charcoal, most of everybody here. You can use wood, but uh, when some friends come up, like uh, these friends that I've never seen before came in today, <laughs> and uh, we got them a little uh, head start. Uh, we uh, uh, loaned them some charcoal already hot, and they threw their coals on it, and they got their dishes right on time. So uh, we're having a great day, good fun. Glad to have you here with us. and. Uh, yeah, well, I'm so glad you invited us up. You know, we came up to, to spend the night and camp here, and it's really beautiful. So, so the people that came in today that are not necessarily members, it's their first time. Right. What what time do they come up, and uh, how do they set up? I got here today around 11 o'clock and uh, stud, uh, started out. We usually take these charcoal starters, and uh, I started three of them at one time and uh, got them all good and hot, and then uh, I started... Uh, my process of cooking it takes two to three hours usually and uh but uh you'll see uh you see, you see the gentleman over here uh, uh that you interviewed a few minutes ago he's he's cooking with charcoal on the bottom and top so uh it uh and and the way it works is it's got a little uh we have a little chart like if you want 350 degrees you do so many charcoals on top and so many on bottom and it's kind of like cooking at home when you turn the dial you know yeah well you know um when you were on the show you were real popular and a lot of people started asking do you can you come out and do um boy scout um you know gatherings and kind of teach them how to do it do you do things like that at your farm we actually we don't we don't do that at the farm but actually i'm associated with a coosa valley detention center through the master gardener program we do that uh two times a year and uh, have usually three or four people different things and uh, demonstrating how it works so uh be, awesome. be more than popular. I mean, uh, you know, Boy Scouts is how most of these guys get started. Yeah. And, uh, and, the, and the, it's kind of crazy, but the guy that uh, you interviewed first, uh, who uh, was at the uh, Normandy invasion, uh, he's got some incredible pots. Came from a Birmingham stove. Oh, wow. And that's, uh, that dates him in the, in the 40s and 50s. And uh, I was just telling him, I have a, a four-eye stove at my farm that uh, that I bought from Birmingham stove and it's just uh, it's just great to have a part of history you know that's something that uh, was so vital back in those days you know everybody had a stove and everybody had a they had to cook that way there was no electricity or whatever so all right, so this traditionally is cowboy cooking. Oh, yeah, it's cowboy <laughs> cooking all the way. We just don't have a chuck wagon here today. But maybe tomorrow if you come by the farm, we'll we'll, we'll do a, a chuck wagon deal for you. <laughs> Definitely. And, and when people come out to these gatherings, um, is it free to get in? Is it free to eat? Or <laughs> Oh, it's free to eat and it's free to come. So and, uh, once you come and you'll get established here, you'll, you'll be part of it. So okay. it just uh, I've only been involved in it two years, but... Uh, some of these guys you'll be talking to today, they've been in it 30, 40 years, you know, uh, doing it. And uh, I just, uh, when I first saw the first first one I went to, I said, you know, I want to be a part of this. So. Well, it seems like a great group of people, and we're going to get inside and meet them. All right. All right. <laughs> thank it's about that time. Yeah. All right. All right. Thank you, you so much, Dick. Thank you. Hillman Prestridge. 
Uh, so you're here at the Alabama Dutch Oven Gathering here in Gadsden. Do you come often? Are you a member of this? This is my first time. So, so are you cooking or are you just eating today? I'm just eating. <laughs> and, and we noticed your, your lovely cane here with the American theme. Tell us about your service in the, the military. Well, I lived down in Pell City at the uh, veterans home down there. And um, I went, well, I, I was one of the lucky ones. I made the first wave of the invasion, went up to St. Lowe, took it, and got out. Awesome. Well, we really thank you for your service and welcome you here today, even though it's my first time, too. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for sharing with Southern Horse Talk and Alabama Horse Talk. They look like we're going to have some food that's eatable. Yeah, yeah they said there was about 90 pots going to be put on that table, so I'm getting excited about that. <laughs> All right, well, enjoy. Thank you. Okay, we're, we're telling some more war stories. They, they sent 80 troops into World War II, and uh, 60 of them made the invasion, first wave of the invasion of France over Omaha Beach. And uh, 11 of them got to go home. Oh my goodness, and that's the Bedford boys? That's the Bedford boys. Hey. Little town of 3,000. They lost more troops than any other town in the USA. Were you part of that or, or no? I, I went in with them. I went, I mean, I'm not a Bedford boy. <laughs> <laughs> Even though they have put me with them later. Well, that's awesome. That, that's such great history. Thank you so much for sharing with us. So are you going in to eat now? Oh, yeah. I'll go in and see what they got to eat. Yeah, okay. And well, enjoy it. Yeah, exactly. Well, we'll see you in there. Thank you so much. Hey, horse friends, this is Becca Salmon with Southern Horse Talk, and I'm still at the River Country Campground in Gadsden for the Dutch Oven Gathering for Alabama. And I'm here with, what's your name? Matt and Mella. Mella. And so, nice to meet y'all. So, uh, how long have you been with the uh, Alabama dog? This is our first year. First year. First year. Okay, and so did you learn to cook through this, or did you already know? Yeah, through this, with the Dutch ovens, yeah. Okay, and so did you just start hanging out with them and just watch how they do it, and that's how you learn? And so what did you cook today for the, the gathering? Uh, chili beans and sausage and uh, pound of cornbread. Awesome. Well, that sounds good. <laughs> oh, they're, they're calling our names. Thank you all. Well, this is our uh, the Alabama Dutch Oven Society, Alabama Dog, whatever you want to call it. Uh, this is our last event of the season. Uh, so it's, we've got a pretty good crowd. Check the website. The schedule will be on the Alabama Dutch Oven Society website for next year. There is pretty much the venue is pretty much what it has been for the last three or four years. Most of the places are the same, but we'd like to welcome everybody today. Thank everybody for coming. Uh, if we needed to order some weather, uh, we ordered it. Chamber of Commerce. I mean, just whatever you want to say. It's it's a beautiful day. We'd like to certainly thank everybody for traveling, and uh, if we'll bow our heads, I'll say a blessing. But it's always the same rules. Whoever eats the fastest will get the most. So after <laughs> blessing, you on you Dear Lord, thank you for this day, our blessings, the many things you've bestowed our way. We just always pray that you'd give us safe travel as we come to these events and go home. We always look so forward to being with each other and enjoying each other's company. And just thank you for everything you bless us with. Bless this food, bless the people that have prepared it. Just uh, give us the strength and the wisdom we need to make another day, dear God. Amen. 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 On y'all. <laughs>